today's DIY is shabby chic velvet heart. I'm upcycling fabric from Christmas for the velvet. And additionally, the crocheted lace that has the satin ribbon that we are also using in this project, I received through bartering. I do sew for hire and traded out this dust ruffle for labor. It is absolutely beautiful and it is stunning. This will help open up your creative mind and ideas for you when you're out thrifting or maybe you have leftover bedding that you don't use anymore, doesn't fit your decor, and you can upcycle it. And perhaps the velvet might come from a dress or a skirt that you have that no longer fits your, you know, girly figure, and you can upcycle it and still benefit from its beauty. Thinking outside the box, being budget friendly, and a true budget buster because we're going to benefit from Dollar Tree's foam shaped heart. And this is for year round. You could also do it for a wedding, a baby shower, or maybe someone with an antebellum heart just like you as a gift. So let's get to craft. The first task to overcome is this ruffled edge from off of this dust ruffle. Now, common dust ruffles don't have all of this extra and this one would have costed a bundle but as I'm evaluating it and looking over it I'm finding that the dust ruffle is attached to the additional fabric and I just need to remove it and it was simple to, to use a stitch ripper or even a small pair of scissors and this is all the fabric that was produced from the dust ruffle this is the bottom and what is wrapped on the doll was actually the additional ruffle edge and then the lace with the satin ribbon was attached to the ruffled edge. So I have lots of fabric. Now we have our styrofoam heart from Dollar Tree and I have crushed velvet as well as standard velvet. The crushed velvet there is stretchy and then I have the crush velvet, and I'm just going to use some school glue. So getting our supplies together, I elected to use regular velvet and laying your shape or your foam part on the fabric. The goal here is to select enough fabric that will overlap the heart and be able to be gathered or rather brought together on the edges along the sides. So any extra that's overhung, I just did a rough cut to get that off. And that extra weight helps modify and get this shaped as close as I need it. So I'm pulling it up here just to see if it's got at least mm, half an inch to an inch overlap and it's meeting up on the side edges. Grab me a paintbrush with a wide bristle and just placed the glue on there. Now the brush, I'm just gonna use that to smooth it. And that is so that we can get the fabric to attach. And believe it or not, you can do this very thing with regular Elmer's glue or school glue. The idea is to make sure that the foam part is fully covered and you're gonna move pretty swift. So go along the side as well making sure you get it all the way around. We're just concerned about one side and that we've got that smooth. Placing it face down, you can go ahead and start bringing the fabric up along it. And this is just getting the one side covered. Now you're gonna make a fuss over it for just a moment, making sure it's smoothed out because velvet, crushed velvet, any kind of fabric once that glue's there, it's going to have a stretch to it. I wouldn't recommend using knit on this. You want something that's a polyester knit with a little bit of cotton in it, or like the velvet where it has a fleece, and the fleece cotton woven really smooth and tight, and it's just a beautiful shape. These foam hearts are so impressive. These are extremely expensive if you have to buy one. So such a bargain buster for our budget friendly shabby sheet DIY foam heart. And we're making us a black velvet heart. I wanted navy blue, but I couldn't locate my navy blue velvet. But the black, oh, it was exceptional and perfect for this task. 
Now that I'm sure I've got it all smoothed and stretched out across the one side of my foam part, I went ahead and placed the glue that I would need on the other side. And once again, used my brush to smooth it out. Now I could pretty much bring up the fabric and bring it over the top. If you notice, when you do your foam shape part, you want to place the open end of your fabric at the top where the heart shape is. And that way the fold is down at the point edge, which is going to pay off in large amounts whenever you go to start trimming out your heart. I was real focused on the arch. The arch was really important to me. Now see how I'm pressing the fabric pieces together, the front and the back at the side edge where you would actually see the natural division of the foam shaped heart. That's real important that just that little bit of glue from stretching it over the heart and meeting them together at the sides. And make sure you make a fuss over it like I am and go around and press it all the way around. We'll make sure that it's closed up. We're gonna rough cut the excess but leave that edge see there I have about a quarter of an inch edge overhanging maybe a little more and don't cut too deep into your arch just rough cut it and get off the excess that weight will pull down and cause the two pieces to come undone so we want to get the extra off that'll make this task a lot easier make a little fuss again going around making sure nothing came apart and you may want to leave it for about 30 minutes, hour, or even overnight if you like. It's up to you. You can actually move along with this project real quick. And the school glue is pretty thick and damp on the velvet, and it does take velvet a little bit longer to dry than if you were just using cotton fabric. It's looking really gorgeous. So now it's time to stage out. This is the crocheted lace with the satin ribbon running through it that come off of the ruffle that I thrifted. And I am so excited about sharing this project. These are the string of pearls. You can buy these on the ribbon spools just like you would any ribbon. And right now, just staging and sizing to see exactly how much I have and how much I want to use. And as I've got this string of pearls here already pre-strung, like I said, they come on like a ribbon spool. I've got about four rounds. So that little edge, we are attaching the lace across that edge or any of your trimmings. You want to use that side edge to your advantage. This gives you that little ledge to glue and attach to. And we're going to be using this a lot. Stay tuned because we have a lot more to go and a lot more trimming to do. But I think you're going to enjoy seeing this thing and the transformation that comes about. I'll do the pearls the same way. I need to attach those to the upper edge and the bottom edge. Just a dab of glue is all you need. And once I attach that on the edge, I'll go down to the bottom, size it up, and then cut it to the length because I want at least one ball of that pearl sitting on the edge when I glue it. Now I kept going about putting my pearls across that arch and there was a photo I saw inspired me on Pinterest and my mind simply went to oh my goodness I know how I can upcycle that ruffle bed dust ruffle and also the lace and the trim so now we're trimming off the overlap of the crocheted lace or any of your ribbon the fabric part just up to that edge now this satin cording was actually from Christmas and it's pretty long and it's quarter inch around I love it. So you want to begin at the point. Most important to resolve any cordon problems, 
do not start in the arch center. You always want to start at the point of your heart and you want to leave a little bit of overhang. So utilize that edge again. And as you can see, I pulled the cord beyond it. And using that edge, a little bit of your hot glue and trim it out with the cord, laying it right on that edge. This is why we left that. We didn't want to cut it all the way back. And we're going to be using it some more. As you get ready to close this up, overlap the cording. Make sure you overlap it. Melt down any of the glue that you might have in excess. Just lay the tip of your glue gun on it and it will melt it down and be smooth and no one will even see it. It will be totally unnoticeable. When you trim off your cording at the end, you've left a little bit of extra. So the important thing is when you place your hot melt glue on the cording, give it a second and then push it to the back, the very rear. So trim off any difference that overhung beyond the edge. And these are some really truly sharp pointed scissors I am using. I love these things. I use them for my embroidering. Now we're going to color over it and blend it in with a black sharpie marker. Just a jiffy. Just like that. La, la. Now let's make us some roses or some florals to go atop. Cut you a 30 inch piece of any size lace, ribbon, of whatever you desire. And go ahead and fold over the very end and then twist it. And when you wind it around your finger, you're twisting it up pretty tight. And then start going in a circle. And you can make these as large and as small as you like. But the roses atop of this heart look so delicate, shabby chic, and absolutely antebellum gorgeous. So your shabby chic roses are real easy to make. And it doesn't matter the width of the ribbon. What matters is as you go along the outer perimeter, the more twisted up your lace or ribbon, the thicker and broader it's going to be. And however tight you wind it will determine the size. So that way you can make it any size. Now when I trimmed it off, I'm taking the difference. Because we only need 30 inches for three roses and we can get three different sizes. So now we've turned the edge in, twisted it up, and then we start winding it around itself. And if you wind it like this, you only need a spot of glue to hold it closed. So cut it off where you need to. Put a little bit of hot melt glue. Give it a moment and then just kind of tickle at it and then bring it around to the side. Now when we glue them onto the heart, they'll be held together. They'll stay together just like this. Now that little short piece that's left over, still once again using only 30 inches in total. Folding in the end, twisting it. Now just roll it around until you get it the size that you desire and as full as you want. If you use a more narrow ribbon or cording or lace, then you can use more or less to get it the size you want. Just keep going around until you get it as big as you want or as small as you like. And you can make even little tiny roses. Now using a burlap piece, 12 inches, this is two and a half inch wide with wire. Remove the wire. We will actually get two rosettes out of this. And you can keep that wire if you want or throw it away. So fold in your top to a point and then fold your sides up, one going one way and one going the other. This will add more texture and detail to your rose and give it more of a rosette look. And wind it around to your content. Get the size to fit in your bouquet or banquet of flowers. When you glue your side the same way. Be careful that glue's hot. Leave it sticky. And then we have enough cut off here to do a tiny one. Hold you top in. 
fold your ribbon back and forth, and then start winding it up. Walk, walk. In the cute we have smalls and mediums. Now we need to attach our hanger. And this is an easy task if you have a tapestry needle. The satin ribbon come from Dollar Tree and it is the one inch wide. And I'm gonna feed it, as you see, the highest part of the arch of the heart. Feed it right in between that little edge we left on against the foam heart and under the cord. Bring it up, tie it, and then make sure your satin ribbons turn the correct way so the shiny side is showing or the mute side, whichever you desire. And then once again, feed it through that wide eye on your tapestry needle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you'll go to the highest part of the arch and run it underneath the cord but through that little edge we left. Tie it into a knot. This will give it a good look. Trim off any difference and walk, lock. She is absolutely beautiful. I enjoyed making this heart with you and add more or less detail. Remember, the more detail, the more beautiful. Now I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and receive notification for future videos just like this one, budget friendly using DIY ideas. And this is Elizabeth here on the Denny Soap DIY channel. Hit the thumbs up, like the video, lets me and YouTube know that you enjoyed the video, and they'll show you more of the like. Until the next DIY, well, I'll be crafting y'all.